Angry Birds was a groundbreaking hit for Rovio, and they weren't stopping anytime soon. A game that successful is bound to grab some attention. Tons of companies were undoubtedly reaching out to partner with Angry Birds, and sure, we got our occasional Angry Birds Cheetos and NHL mascots, but getting fully fledged sequel titles was completely unexpected. It made too much sense for these bird focused properties to team up, so in 2011, Blue Sky and Rovio created a brand new tie in game for the biggest, birdiest movie of the year. This is Angry Birds Rio. Welcome back to our series of ranking every Angry Birds game. We previously covered the original Angry Birds and Seasons, so make sure to catch up on both those games' histories and final rankings before watching this one. It's been a while since those went up, maybe you should rewatch them just to make sure you're caught up. Anyways, I don't think most people expect much from movie tie-ins, and most people would probably say the same about Angry Birds Rio from a first impression. To be fair, most games hold an event to promote movies. There is a Frankenweenie event and Where's My Water, that doesn't mean we need a Where's My Weenie game. Actually, I take that back. Your mom loves playing Where's My Weenie with me! What I'm getting at is, Rio could have easily been a small game with a few level packs that we immediately tossed aside after the movie released. So what we're here to find out today is, was Angry Birds Rio anything more than a shameless promotion? And how does it hold up compared to the other games in the series? Time to find out. 2011 was the year for the creators of Ice Age Blue Sky to release their next big blockbuster. The movie was called Rio, and focused on two birds on the edge of extinction running from smugglers and falling in love on that journey. I never realized this, but that's only the same plot as Ice Age 2. Well, whatever, Rio would be a big hit, and that was no doubt due to Fox's marketing push for the movie. Every movie needs a solid marketing campaign to become popular, and the most common way to do that would be to make ads, trailers, posters, etc. You know, the boring stuff. At the time, Fox was looking into making more interactive experiences for people to connect with their brands. They made an app for Glee so people at home could sing along while they watch a show, stuff like that. Movie tie-in games have always been a thing, you really haven't lived until you've tried Chicken Little for the PS2. But this upcoming collaboration was basically unheard of. Mobile gaming was still pretty new, and while movies were making games for the App Store, they certainly weren't making crossovers with popular mobile games. If that was going to happen, the global phenomenon of Angry Birds would be the obvious choice, especially considering the movie Rio had a few birds of its own. From that standpoint, the collaboration makes perfect sense, but it actually goes even further than that. Blue Sky attracts a much wider audience, gaining fans of everyone who likes the game, and Rovi receives millions of dollars of promotion from the marketing campaigns done by Fox. When trailers and ads are playing on TV, now they're going to mention the game too. Everyone involved gets a boatload of money and fans get a brand new game. Angry Birds was sitting pretty at this time too. In interviews before the game release, they compared the birds to Mario and freaking Mickey Mouse. Angry Birds was huge and they knew it, but I can't help laughing at them calling Mickey Mouse their role model. Angry Birds was a more popular search term than Mickey in 2011, which is crazy to think about. It was certainly mainstream, and Angry Birds Rio was undoubtedly going to be a huge success. We got this incredible cinematic trailer in January 2011 to promote the game, and this trailer is still one of my favorites of all time. The birds have such a unique style here, and the Rio characters? Nigel looks great, but uh, don't stare at Blue and Jewel for too long. The game released in late March to build hype for the movie's release in mid-April. It's downloaded 10 million times that year, and continued to be one of the top downloaded games multiple years afterwards. The game started out with just two chapters, but I think what happened next was really surprising. The game was updated in May, then again in June. All the way until January 2012, the game received updates to follow along with the movie's story. After that, it still received consistent updates, all the way to 2013. Most movie tie-ins fight for your attention while the movie's out, and once that's over, they're like, wait, we made a game for that? Angry Birds Rio was different, and it was really cool to see it receive as much attention as the original and seasons. This game, like every classic Angry Birds game, no longer exists. It was purged just for existing, they didn't lose a license or have any controversy, it was simply deleted for being an Angry Birds game like all the others. The only way I'm playing it is because I own it before then, thank god. Let's go through each chapter in order of release and see what it brought to the table. The first chapter, Smuggler's Den, starts with a recap of the trailer, showing the birds getting kidnapped and taken to Rio. As we all know, pigs are usually pink in our world, so our typical pigs aren't going to cut it. This game made the insane feat of being one of the only games in the series not to feature pigs. How does Angry Birds even work without pigs? Well, in some ways, it's better. Your main goal in this first set of levels is to free all the cage birds. Because they're in these box-shaped cages, they can be integrated into stages like pigs never could before. That makes Smuggler Den one of my personal favorite chapters in the history of Angry Birds. There are so many amazing levels and ideas introduced here that only get more fun as you go. I could never get enough of these stages. I really love these new boxes too. I don't know why, they're just fun and easy to break, I guess. Since this is the first chapter of the game, we received a limited amount of playable birds as well. One of the most exciting parts of any new Angry Birds game is just being reacquainted with each bird. We got Red, the Blues, Chuck, 
And that's it. You'd have to wait to try out the rest, and I really love that. Lastly, there were golden fruits hidden throughout the stages to collect for bonus levels. Later in the game's life, they added bonus levels for getting 3 stars and mighty eagle feathers too. I also just want to say in each video of this series, I'm assuming you've seen the other parts, so I don't feel the need to re-explain existing bird's powers or the gameplay of the slingshot games. When we get to the spin-offs, that will change, of course. The last stage in the pack, you fight against a... a, a tank, I guess? It's a little strange, but the important thing to note is that you free the main characters of the movie, Blue and Jewel. And so it's been very strange that the Angry Birds are balls, even the Cage Birds are balls, but the main characters are straight up birds. There's plenty of promotional art and merchandise of the characters with Angry Birds forms too, so I don't understand why they chose to make them stand out. Here are my little plushies of the main guys, and here's the horrifying art of the other birds, Nico, Pedro, and oh my god! Poor, poor Nigel. I'm actually pretty thankful he doesn't look like that in the game. There's an ending cutscene showing the birds escape to the jungle while Nigel releases his goons. Now that's a goon sesh I can't wait for. Well, in the second chapter, Jungle Escape, we receive these goons as our new enemy, the Marmosets. These guys are so much more memorable in this game than they were in the movie. I generally don't even remember them being in the movie. But almost every level pack included these... things. I'm guessing they are wildly hated, as they can be a little frustrating to fight. You gotta have to knock them over or hit them hard enough to kill, and the noise they make while moving is pretty iconic. You're gonna hear a lot of that playing through the game, trust me. For birds this time around, we got Matilda and our first new bird. Well, birds, I guess. Blue and Jewel are chained up together, and as we learn in the movie, Blue doesn't know how to fly. That's perfect, he fits right in with the flock. They slingshot together, and on activation, Jewel flies the most straightforward. It's a concept no other bird has ever had, and that's pretty cool. I also think the way they handled Blue and Jewel as playable characters is really fun, as their power correlates to the story of the movie. That'll make more sense later, I suppose. Still, they don't appear in many levels, which is a little sad. The end of this chapter features one of my favorite parts of Rio, the boss fights. In every Angry Birds game before now, the boss is just King Pig in a big structure against a lot of birds. This game steps it up, with Nigel flying around while you try to knock him out of the sky. He has a crazy amount of health, so you gotta get some big hits in on him. I will never be able to recreate this shot, so watch this clip from my Angry Birds Birds Part 2 video where I use Matilda to her full potential and show Nigel who the OG White Bird is once and for all. Nigel flies away and our next goal is to break the chain on Blue and Jewel. Mario Lopez Bird conveniently lets us know about his friend Luis's tools. From there we hit the beach and beach volley. There's more marmosets to kill with the help of Bomb this time around. The added sand blocks, beach balls, and umbrellas certainly fit the theme. This is really the level with Blue and Jewel, used in many more levels than before. You can also see people at the beach, which really feels like a big deal for the Angry Birds universe. They are in Rio, but I can't think of another time we've seen people. The last level isn't much of a boss fight, but instead Luis comes and pops every beach ball on the ground, which makes for a ton of destruction against the Marmosets. We free Blue and Jewel, but Nigel kidnaps Jewel immediately after. How convenient. That means in Carnival Upheaval, Blue is on his own. He still can't fly, but he goes nuts when he uses power. It's sort of like a weaker bubbles with zero inflation, but it certainly can be good at times. This also means we never got a playable jewel on our own, which is really sad. I think the most fun and exciting part of any Angry Birds game is trying out the new characters, so it's a little sad to have only gotten two in this game. Anyways, I've always enjoyed the aesthetic of this level in particular. These parade floats add a lot to the theme and really work for the real representation. Our first look at any reference to the pigs in this game come from these pig-shaped balloons, conveniently rewarding the player with 5,000 points when popped. I love it. We got our second big boss fight against the paperclip wearing marmoset, Maro. This guy is like the bane of all real players' existence, it's such a tough boss fight. He randomly jumps around making it nearly impossible to predict his next move. I was very lead to beat him, let's hope he's down for the count. Blue catches up with Jewel and now he's been kidnapped! So much for the new characters. That means we've almost reached the end of our story in the airfield chase, and our birds are on their own this time. Thankfully they have the help of Terrence, finally making his debut this late in the game. We're also back to the cage birds, which you know I love. Except, wait, Blue just shows up here? He got away from his kidnapper just to hang out for a level and then went back into custody? You're a strange guy, Blue. One of my favorite levels in this game is the final of the chapter, an epic chase to catch up to the smuggler's plane. It's really nothing special, I just personally think it's cool. The birds are on the plane now and ready for the final showdown. Thankfully, Hal has finally joined us. I've missed you, buddy. Bubbles even joined in the second half of the chapter. The gang is nearly all here. Other than taking place inside the plane now, there's really no difference here from the last set of levels. 
the final boss is fittingly against Nigel once again, using every bird at our disposal. We get a real cutscene this time, freeing all the birds and watching as Nigel gets skinned alive, surely falling to his death. Kids, don't look away! This certainly won't traumatize anyone, I'm sure of it! The plane crashes right back on Bird Island, stopping the scheming pigs just in time. I love how we somehow ruin the pigs' plans again, without even acknowledging their existence. Also, wouldn't this mean Blue and Jewel just got stranded here too? I guess they could fly back to Rio if they really wanted. In the movie, this was the end of the climax. Everyone assumed the game was over, but rest assured, Rovio announced they would continue making levels based on deleted scenes in the movie. Really scraping the bottom of the barrel, huh? I love this game, I'm glad we got more, but did it really have to be based on deleted scenes? Clearly this game was doing great though, and it was very cool for Rovio and Fox to keep the game going. Before that, they added power-ups to the game, and while most are recycled from previous titles, the TNT drop and Samba Burst were brand new. People have demanded I rank the Samba Burst character on my Birds ranking videos, and I guess that's fair, but it's also red with some fruit on his head? He has an upgraded version of Blue's power, I guess. Tell you what, get this video to 5,000 likes and I'll put him in part 6, how's that? Market Mayhem was a chapter based on a deleted scene, thankfully adding a brand new location for these levels to take place in. The background is genuinely beautiful here, I like playing this just for that alone. No story or cutscenes were included, but that's fair. I don't know how they'd explain this logically. I definitely prefer all the chapters before this one, but I don't hate them either. There's still a lot to love here. And somehow Mara returns? I thought we murdered that guy like 4 chapters ago. Well, time to take out his paperclip wearing ass for a second time. Tell me why this guy laughs like the damn annoying orange. There is one last level pack, but it was added before Market Mayhem. Golden Beach Ball is a completely bonus set of levels on a sunsetting beach. There is a Golden Beach Ball in one of the levels that would unlock this bonus pack, and I love that. On PC, you actually had to get a code from owning the movie, which is a good incentive I guess, but maybe a little scummy. There's still 30 levels here, which is very kind, but it is sad to be on the beach once again. I do like the beach aesthetic, but would have loved something new. Well, the Rio movie was long gone, and the game had received plenty of additions at that point, so fans were probably assuming the game would be soon forgotten. But Rio was a very successful movie, it was about to receive a sequel, and what do you know, we already have a super popular tie-in game made to promote it. They'll probably just add some more levels and call it a day, right? Yeah, no, this game doesn't do basic. In December of 2013, a new chapter was added and an entirely new art style to the Angerverse series, one we had never seen before or seen since. It's meant to replicate the Toon style, which I would say, yeah, kinda, but also, no, not really. <laughs> it's much more distinctly detailed. I don't know if they were being paid to do this or just knew how much of a masterpiece this game was, but either way, we basically were getting a brand new Angry Birds game. In fact, I would not be surprised if this was meant to be a new game at some point, simply because it feels so different from the other levels in this game. There's concept art of a map the birds would follow rather than the more basic menu layout. Let's also take the time to look at some of the other art made for this update, which is unbelievably breathtaking. This game is art. The thing is, when the first new chapter, Rocket Rumble, was added, it looked the same as the rest. In this trailer, we can see what these levels once looked like, showing the brand new Stella in her typical look. However, when the next pack was added, the art style was retroactively changed, and they added a new section for Rio 2 to the menu. I have a couple conspiracy theories about this. One is that this was never intended to promote Rio 2 until they saw how popular the game still was, or how into it Fox would be. Or maybe they initially only released this to celebrate the new movie and that was going to be it, until the update did well and they changed their minds. Or maybe it was just going to be this way and didn't have the new graphics ready yet, who can say? I'm on to you Rovio! This update still added a lot. As mentioned, Stella is finally here. The flock is finally complete! These elves have a major focus on fireworks, explosions, all that stuff. They even celebrated by adding a brand new bird in the bonus levels, the Rocket Bird. When activated, Chuck launches forward in whatever direction he was facing. I appreciate his addition very much, and will add him to that stretch goal of 5k likes. Him and Samba Bird can be in part 6. You know what to do. There's only 20 levels in each chapter from now on, which is 10 less than before. Honestly, I kinda like that. The next update made the visual change, added the chapter high dive, and most importantly, this little playground tutorial chapter. There's 5 levels to play around in where you can freely use power ups and even try out the mighty eagle if you want to. People get mad when I don't mention this stuff, so fine, it's been mentioned. My arch nemesis returns, water levels. And the thing is, Rio 2 levels heavily focus on the water mechanics, not just this one chapter. Man, you're lucky I like you, Rio. The cage birds return, and the brand new cage dolphins are here for the underwater sections. 
I suppose it would have been cool to drown some birds down there, but people have informed me that dolphins can't survive underwater either, so in a way this is a worse crime than caging birds. Then again, these are river dolphins, and some are cute and others are, well, they're terrifying. I think this is the first time seeing Hal in a Toons animation style as well. He's like a toucan now, I guess. His beak is really long, and it kind of makes him look weird when he's spinning like this. I've never really liked this version of Hal, truthfully. And while there really isn't a story in the Rio 2 levels, the final level here ends with a mysterious cage, and unlocking it reveals none other than Nigel's return. If I was like 3 years old, I probably would have screamed and threw my iPad at the wall when he showed up again. I like it! Blossom River was next, continuing the water mechanics into a more natural environment. A lot of the levels take place on boats, giving the illusion that the whole stage is moving sometimes. Honestly, I don't like these levels very much. I thought the previous two chapters were much better. However, we get our only boss fight of the Rio 2 levels here, and I did enjoy that. We gotta defeat two massive marmosets jumping around the stage and then push Nigel into his own self-destruct button. It works great as a boss and feels right at home alongside the others in the game. Then we have Timber Tumble, the chapter where our heroes join in on some deforestation. In all seriousness, there's a big chunk of new mechanics in each of the levels here that are generally pretty fun and make for some unique level ideas. The biggest addition is a brand new Blue. It's been a while, but he's finally playable once again, this time with a brand new power. Blue himself doesn't do a whole lot, but he calls in a massive flock of birds to take out a structure. It's almost like a mini Mighty Eagle, becoming a brand new power up for the game. There is a secret in Timber Tumble that unlocks a whole new chapter. The last level pack added to Rio is the Hidden Harbor, or more accurately, another pack of levels from the High Dive theme. There is no visual difference, and only 15 levels in the chapter. There are monkeys this time, sure, but look at how invincible this one is. Not fair, dude! It's sort of a sad ending of the game, but don't worry. A bonus pack of levels known as Treasure Hunt is left with 40 whole levels. That's more than any other chapter in the game. Coins were added in this update, and you can use them to buy power-ups and unlock stages. It's the easiest way to get the bonus stages without getting 3 stars or the secret items. Strangely, the levels in this chapter are unlocked by waiting a certain amount of time or using coins to unlock them right away. I've already unlocked them all, so I don't remember much of that, but I do remember enjoying the process of playing a new level or so once a day. I'm glad I did that before working on this video, that would be very annoying. As the last chapter used the harbor motif, this one is centered in the jungle levels. Also, I'm pretty sure these levels used to have a bunch of coins in them, hence the name Treasure Hunt, but I already got them all, lol. That makes me lol out loud and raffle on the floor, dude. Without the coins, these are pretty generic levels, but that's okay. It's a pretty fun, massive chapter that really feels like a proper ending to the Rio game. I'm pretty sure I was as thorough as I could possibly have been without going level by level through the game. And yes, I know some of you freaks out there would actually enjoy that, but I certainly would not. We've gotten to the point in the video where we talk about our thoughts on the game and where it's going to be placed on our tier list. If you paid attention during the points in the video where you can see the menu, you might have noticed I have 3 starred this entire game. That's a pretty big deal considering while I got very close to doing so in the previous games, I have never done that in any other Angry Birds game. And that's because I truly believe that this is the greatest Angry Birds slingshot game ever made. It may not have the most levels, it may not be that revolutionary, it just does not matter. The levels here are all so much fun to play. Not only playing them, but 3 starring them is genuinely fun all the way through. These levels remind me of the early days of the first Angry Birds game, keeping things simple. So many Angry Birds have tried to overcomplicate the mechanics, Angry Birds seasons especially being a culprit of this. The last 10 or so packs in that game are honestly abysmal in my opinion. The only reason that game is an S is because the early packs are so great. And yes, I will admit that the Rio 2 levels start to get into that. I undeniably would have preferred the game if they never add those chapters. Angry Birds games need to understand that more does not always mean better. Angry Birds Rio encapsulate those early days of the franchise, featuring great level designs, fun mechanics, and a simple premise. If you ask me a single plot point from the movie Rio, I could not tell you. I don't care about the movie. This game is so much more than a movie tie-in, and it deserves the full respect of an S tier placement. I promise guys, not every game is going to be an S. I think the first three games are peak Angry Birds, I really do. I actually promise you that the next game, Angry Birds Friends, will not go in S. So tune in next time to see where it's placed. This series did not get the attention I'd hoped for, which is a little sad. Yet here I am, continuing it. What gives? Well, there are some things you're just passionate about. Things you want to talk about, regardless of whether you think people will listen. And there's a smaller audience of people who do want this series to continue. Actually, a lot of my videos in the last few months haven't got the attention I hoped, or even expected. Last year, I said 2023 was going to make or break my channel, and I saw crazy success pushing me through into 2024. But now I'm sitting here making videos for a much smaller audience. I still enjoy it, but the views can no longer keep me afloat, 
I pour countless hours every day into making these videos for you all and I don't want to stop. So now, once again, I'm making the statement that the first half of 2024 will make or break my channel, for real. I really can't imagine quitting YouTube forever, but I'll have to move on to other things if I can't keep up successes. I'm airing my heart out to the few of you who stick around at the end of the videos, in a video I know won't do very well. And I just want to say this. If there are any small content creators out there you really care about or really enjoy watching, they need support. I'm not even speaking on my own behalf. Truthfully, I'll be fine no matter what happens. But there are people who do this for a living that won't be. This could be their only source of income. This could be their dream. And they rely on you to make it happen. I've had tons of successes, yet here I am, fighting a hopeless battle. If you have a flexible income in any way, find your favorite creators to help them out. I'm not talking about Markiplier or Jacksepticeye. I'm talking creators who need support. Harry Gold, Papa Ginos, Edic, Bizabazow. These are some of my favorites, and there are tons more out there. Obviously, put yourself first, but remember to support your creators, or else they might not be around to create much longer. Anyways, I love Colorful Round Bird Game. Do you love Colorful Round Bird Games? If you do, you can, wink wink, support me on Patreon and make this exact tier list yourself. All the games, not just these three. And no pressure, of course. Support your favorite creators first, come back to me if you want to. Sorry to my channel members who decided to support me without the long-winded speech. I very much appreciate all of you, so thank you once again to Groth One Finger, who now goes by Leland, which is an equally cool name, Patrick Byerjohn, Honomaki, Brightstreak, MD Switchy, Dolphin Rider H2O, Dojo Master, Chris Out Creations, Labatain, Eduardo Santiago, Jasper TV, Keep, Omegon, Gall Guy, Daisy, It's Me Allie, and Jep the Legend. Next time will be Angry Birds Friends, and I plan to go through every tournament the game has ever held. Obviously like one sentence each. Let me know in the comments if you stuck around to this point and if you want me to continue this series. Thank you very much for being here, and I'll see you then. Goodbye. The birds are on the plane now and ready for the final showdown. We're on the- <laughs> And the script I literally wrote as the next line. We're on the plane now for the final showdown. I, I was really dumb when writing the script apparently.